Hey, what's up my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones with the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services. And here I'm bringing you, wait for it, how to get your contractor's license for 2019. Okay, how to get your contractor's license for 2019 is a course everyone been asking for. So let's dive into it. License contractor for 2019. And this is an updated version from um, uh, how to get your contractor's license for 2017. So let's listen up. Some things we're going to be covering, be covering here is, uh, do I need to sign up for a school? Okay. Next, what experience do I really need? Right? A lot of people ask me, what experience do I really need? Uh, and how many years do I need to have it? And what's going to qualify? So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Next one, once I sign up for a school, what do I do next? Okay. A lot of people don't know what to do. A lot of these schools are just taking in numbers. Okay. So they're not directing people on what to do next. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, kind of give you a little bit of direction um, on step one, step two, and where to go. Should I choose an LLC, an S Corp, or C Corp, or partnership? I think this question here, uh, we get a lot because people really don't know what to start, right? Uh, they really not, especially as contractors, we not, excuse me, savvy up on where to go with this corporation thing which one to choose which one if we choose this one would it be bad for us or choose this one is it right for us so we're going to talk a little bit about s corp and what's the requirements by the state board but ultimately you have to do your research on this to decide what's best for your company and where you want your company to go and how your company is going to look in the future. You always have to think about where you're going. Okay. Next, we're going to cover what classifications should I apply for? Okay. What classifications should I apply for? Uh, next is uh, what's holding you back to getting your contractor's license? And I talked to quite a bit of individuals that go through this. What's holding you back? Okay, you must be honest on the application. This is very important here. There's a lot of individuals that are not honest on the application and fudging their numbers. You will get caught. You're not the first one to fudge it. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that and what are the in, who are the individuals that usually fudge the numbers that usually get flagged by the board, okay? Next, accommodation request for examination. Uh, they have a they they will meet your needs uh, uh, of your disabled. Uh, uh, they would actually meet your needs. A lot of uh, this information is not shared enough. Okay, what if I fail the exam? I'm going to tell you what happens if you fail. What to do next? How to get a contractor's license without taking a test? This is a, I have a video on YouTube right now that talks about this and such a hot video, such a hot topic. Um, and a lot of people are interested in that. Okay, next, how much does it cost? How much does it cost to get your license? So next is reciprocity. And what does that cover? And what states are in the reciprocity program with the California uh, State License Board? Next, examination eligibility requirements. Okay, we're going to cover what else can cover you to get your contractor's license. And you may, some of you may already meet this requirement and can file now. Okay, what are the re financial requirements to get your license? How to prevent delays with the contractor application? The contractor uh, 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 a contract state license board, that is one of the biggest things I'm dealing with is application delay because we're turning in applications that are incomplete, blank spaces, and we're really not reading the instructions. So it's so many of us that gets delayed 
on the minor things, okay? What to expect if application is accepted? What is the next step? Next, we're gonna talk about the Construction Entrepreneur School of Services. All right, so let's get started. All right, first topic here, okay? So general engineering um, license, okay? Now, general engineering license, okay? Now, a lot of people think just because I have an A license that I can do everything underneath the sun. And this is so much far from the truth, okay? With an A license, you can literally work on fixed works that requires specialized engineering knowledge and skill, okay? So you can work on, let's say, uh, water power, flood control, streets, roads, tunnels, bridges, pipelines, and such. So that's what you can really cover. That's what you can really do with an A license, okay? Now, with an A license, you can't go and build a commercial building, okay? But with an A license, you can do the foundation for the commercial building. But you can't go and build a commercial building with an A license. All right, next is the B, the general B license, okay? Now, this license is dealing with uh, uh, connections with uh, structural built, or things being built or to be built, okay? It requires um, in construction the use of at least two or more trades or crafts. Uh, basically, and, and you have to get this, okay? So with a B license, the board basically is saying that you're a carpenter, right? But you only fall only as a carpenter as a subcontractor. So if, you, if you're bidding on work as a subcontractor with a B license, okay, you can be a prime and a sub, okay? But if you're bidding on work as a sub with a B license, you only can go after carpentry work, okay? Framing work. Now, if you're bidding on work as a prime contractor, prime contractor is the one that's running the project, okay? We call it prime, the general contractor. Okay, the top contractor. If you're bidding on projects as a prime contractor, then you have to have two or more trades. Okay, now the two or more trades need to be one. Remember, you already have to have framing. You have to have carpentry. Now you have to have two other trades to bid as a prime. So that could be concrete and tile. That could be. Um, concrete and tile, that could be drywall and paint, okay? So framing, drywall, and paint, okay? So framing, electrical, and drywall. So that's what you have to have if you're bidding as a prime contractor. You, you have to have that as a minimum. You cannot have a B license and bid on electrical work and then sub it out. Let me say that again. You cannot have a B license and bid on drywall work to sub it out. You're in violation, okay? So some of the things that B license can do, you can do single family uh, homes, you can do multi-residential homes, you can do commercial buildings, you can do remodels, additions. Just remember that caveat that I just spoke about, okay? All right, next. We're gonna talk about the C license. So the C specialty license, okay? Now, as I'm laying out these different classifications, it's very um, important that you understand the board has lined up these applications to do different type of work, okay? So the A license deal with the general engineering stuff, the roads, highways, bridges. The B license deal with the commercial building things. But there's a caveat with that, okay? The C license deals with the Pacific trades, okay? With a with a uh, with a or the C license, I believe there's 42 classifications. So with a C license, you can get uh, a C8 license. I have a C8 license. That means that I can do concrete work. That means I can't go out and do street work because the street work requires an A license. I can do foundations, I can do driveways, I can do things like that, okay? Sometimes depending on what city and county, I can do sidewalks. 
Sometimes the city and county requires you to have an A license to do sidewalks, okay? Depends on if it's a, a homeowner doing it or maybe a public works company, a public works entity doing it, okay? They're gonna require you to have different things. So with the C license, uh, it, it deals with a, a, a particular trade and you only can work in that trade. So if you get your C license in electrical, you only can do electrical work, plain and simple. Okay, uh, you get your license in uh, C7, low voltage systems. You only can do low voltage systems. You can't go out and do electrical. Now I say this because this is very important. You have to, when you decide what classification you want to get, you have to think about where you want to go and now not where you're at now. Okay, where you want to go so you're not limited in the near future as you start your business, okay? I hope you're enjoying this video, but if you're looking to get your contractor's license, make sure you check us out. Our information is below. Thanks for watching. All right, next is the uh, C61 uh, limited specialty classification. Now C61 was actually created by the staff of the CSLB. And they created it when they started realizing that a lot of classification was not covered under the original, like 42 uh, uh, separate C classifications, okay? So they start creating this uh, C61 limited specialty classification, which lists D licenses. So uh, some of the things that's under uh, C61 license is a uh, 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 pool and spa maintenance is an actual license. Uh, there's a D29 for uh, paper hanging, wallpaper hanging, okay? Uh, there's a D52 for uh, window coverings, all right? Someone to come out hang on window coverings. So those are the licenses. There's also a D38 for uh, sand and water blasting. Right, you want to do a uh, uh, sand blasting, right? Water blasting. There's a license for that, and it falls under the C61 D classification. So it's D38. So you get a C61 with a D38 uh, classification uh, if you file for it. A lot of those classifications there does not require you to take a trade test. So if you file, and there's also one for concrete. And there are two concrete related services for drilling, uh, corn and sidewalks, okay, and things like that. So if you file to take one of those trades there under the C61, the D classifications, they're not going to require you to take a trade. You're only going to take the law test. So uh, a lot of times you have to read through those classifications because I had a gentleman call me the other week and was actually thinking about doing a C classification, but that person actually fell under a C61 classification D section, okay?